morning and welcome to another daily devotional. I often get asked <coughs> when I'm talking to people about their roles, about their ministries, about service, uh, what can I do? Uh, that's a very much a recurring question I've had over many years. Or how can I be more involved in ministry? Perhaps they uh, they think because I've been able to travel or I've been in I've led churches, they, they think that everything has to be on that kind of public, uh, large scale, if you like. Um, but that's generally because there's a misunderstanding of this word ministry, which has become widely accepted in that ministry is a professional job, if you like, carried out by pastors or missionaries who are in full-time Christian ministry. And that always makes me laugh, although we use it as a designation because it's easier sometimes for some people to understand what it is people like myself do, uh, although that often leads to some very interesting questions. Really, it's a wrong impression for, from us of what ministry is really all about, because as Christian disciples, we're all called the ministry, because it's just another word for service. And... Uh, as Christians, we should all be involved full time in ministry or in Christian service, promoting the gospel of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. If we grasp that ministry is simply service, then we would have a different outlook on what it is that we do and what it is that we get involved in, uh, in our local church lives and in our own personal experience as well. Of course, continuing the theme that we've been looking at over the last few weeks as we begin this new year. Uh, I'm suggesting today that every single Christian should be and can be involved in vital ministry because the one aspect of this ministry or service that we can all be involved in is this wonderful ministry of prayer. We have to be involved in prayer. Every person, every Christian Every born-again believer, every follower, every disciple, whatever we want to call ourselves, can be involved in this essential ministry of prayer. In the book of Acts, in chapter 1 and verse 14, it states this. All these, with one accord, were devoting themselves to pray, together with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. And so this is following the ascension. Jesus had returned to heaven. And then we're given this little picture of life uh, for the early church. The early church that was now without its figure, its figurehead, sorry, of Jesus being there with them. So what does it say? It says that they devoted themselves to pray. They all prayed. And I like this because it says that both men and women united in prayer. Now, this was quite revolutionary, if you think about it, because in that day, uh, at that time, the public worship, men and women were separated. And so this is suddenly uh, an amazing revolutionary step in the fact that there were men and women gathered together to pray. That would be, of course, the disciples and then uh, those women that supported Jesus along with Mary, uh, his mother. See, what we have to remember is this, Christ and the gospel unites us, whatever our gender. There's no division. Men and women prayed and worshipped together. And so we see how the gospel reaches across those boundaries of preconceived ideas of religion and brings a liberation to all people who believe in the gospel. We also see here as well that the brothers of Jesus are mentioned, those who had previously been sceptical about him and his role and his ministry. They had not accepted his initial cause of Messiahship, but they had now by this time been converted to the cause and understood really who Jesus was. What a great encouragement that should be to us today on both angles. First of all, that there should be unity in the church and that we can all pray together. Men and women can gather together to pray. And then secondly, what a great encouragement to 
us all who have unsaved relatives, even those who we might suggest or describe as being sceptics, they too can come through to the fullness and the knowledge of the gospel of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Furthermore, in Acts chapter 1, which is a lovely chapter, Acts chapter 1 and verse 24, it also shows us there that this, this united prayer is a very serious business, but we are dealing with serious issues. It says in, in that verse 24, Lord, you who know the hearts of all men. Uh, as we come to prayer, we have to realise who it is that we call on. The Lord, the Creator. The one who knows our every thought, every intention of our hearts. Why is that important? Well, it's important to us because as we come to prayer, we cannot hide our sin. We cannot be hide behind a veil or a mask of religiosity. We have to be open before God. God knows what's going on in our very hearts. He knows our minds. He knows what we are thinking. He knows how we are living. And so it's not just about the show that we can put on when we go to a prayer meeting. It's not just about the, the image that we portray when we go to uh, a church service. It's about who we are all the time. And, and the Lord, it says, he knows our hearts. And so how important it is that we are living in a pure and sanctified manner. You know, we shouldn't be speaking against other people. We know that what we do in private is maybe not be seen by other people, but it's seen by God. So we have to have this correct attitude in prayer that as we come, we lay ourselves open before God and ask him to make us holy and fit for service. See, we can only pray effectively if our hearts are right before God. And then we also see in that same verse, verse 24 of Acts chapter 1, that prayer always brings the correct answer. They were looking here as they prayed for a choice as a replacement disciple for Judas. The apostles knew that they needed the right man in the role. And they knew that the right man for the job would be God's man and God's choice. And so they prayed and they said to the Lord, Lord, you know who we need. You know the hearts of all of these people around us. You know the one who's the genuine contender and the genuine person to fill this role in this avenue of ministry. And it says they prayed and the correct decision was made and Matthias was chosen. Now this, this incident then this morning reveals the importance of everyone being involved in the ministry of prayer, especially for important decisions which are being made in the local church. But three things very quickly just to remind us this morning to encourage us as we uh, continue this life of prayer and service. First of all, prayer is a universal ministry. Anyone can pray and every disciple of Jesus should pray. Secondly, prayer is a serious business because God knows our hearts and he knows the needs that we have. The real needs, the deep needs, whether that's personally or corporately as the body of Christ. And then thirdly, we see that prayer is the means to obtaining God's answers for those needs and those situations and difficulties that perhaps we face. So if we revisit the question this morning where we began, what can I do? You may be asking that this morning. You may be asking, well, what can I do? I can't go to uh asia i can't go to africa i couldn't even stand up in in the church in newbridge and, and deliver a sermon uh well maybe not but you can pray take courage this morning be encouraged in prayer you can pray if you want to have a greater involvement in the ministry of the church if you want to see the local church move forward grow expand its influence in this in the community in which you work then start praying and keep praying it's the universal ministry which has lasting effects pray remember these words all these with one accord 
were devoted themselves to pray, together with women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers. Amen. We're just going to spend some time in prayer this morning. And this morning, there are two things that I'd like to just turn our attention to as we pray. The first one is unity in the church. You notice in that verse, it says they were all together with one accord. They were united. They had this. It means they had the same heart, the same purpose. So let's pray for that this morning. Let's pray for unity in the church. One of the things that I often get so concerned about in local church life are the little groups or cliques that grow up in churches. This one is more important than that one. And this one wants this done or that one wants the other thing done. We don't need that. We need unity. We need unity behind the, the driving force that the pastor and the leadership are giving as the direction for the church. So let's pray for unity this morning. And also let's pray that we will have a greater desire to pray, both privately and corporately. Let's just spend a few moments in quiet prayer and contemplation and then I will close our time this morning with a short prayer as well. Lord, as we come before you this morning, we just want to pray for unity in the body of Christ. We want to pray for church, the church to be stronger together, to move forward together, to have the vision and to move forward in that vision together, to have a unity of purpose. And so, Lord, we just pray for each and every one. We pray for those that perhaps are finding difficulties in, uh, in the things that are going on in the church, that you would give them a heart of unity. Lord, we pray that you will take away the any hostility that might be there between uh, individuals. Lord, and give us all a heart which is united for Christ in the work in which we're involved in. And Lord, we also pray that you will give us a greater desire to pray, uh, whether that's privately or corporately. We ask that we will all have a greater desire uh, to pray, to seek your face. So, Lord, we just pray you will bless us now as we go about our daily business. In the name of Jesus. Amen.